so today we're going to explore a few more tools that we have uh, to make a map procedurally and make it a little bit more interesting. We're taking baby steps towards what the map will be in the end. Uh, but I did make a few changes to the mesh library to make this happen. But we'll go step by step and I'll show you what I did and how you can recreate this. So the first thing that you can do, I actually added a few more items into my mesh library. And all of these are just 10 by 10 by 10 cubes that have a color to each one. I made a grass, a dirt, a snow cap, and a water. And if you are updating this from a previous mesh library that you made for my last video, uh, like I said, you have to change the size, but also don't forget to, I, it's actually just easiest just to delete the static body and then redo the convex static body. That way it has a collision. And when you go to convert to mesh library, make sure that you have merge with existing on, I believe. It should update it. That way, when you go over to your grid map over here, you will have four different ones in here. Uh, so also, you'll have to update the size of your grid map to 10 by 10 by 10. Otherwise, it'll look pretty awkward. So all the changes to code are in the root node script that is generating the map. And we're going to go over open simplex noise. And when you think of noise, uh, it's kind it's a way of picking random values, but not completely random. Think about fog is what I usually think about. It kind of looks like fog where it's thicker in areas and it's thinner in areas, but it doesn't just completely go randomly for every pixel that you uh, have like we had in the last video. So uh, at the top of the script, I just added a enum for what type of ground tiles we have now that we have four of them, uh, just to make it a little bit more readable for humans. At the bottom here, when we're picking which tile we want, we made a variable to put our noise in. And in the ready function, we're going to go over a few things here. Um, so the first thing you have to do is actually make the open simplex noise, because there is not a node to add to the tree. You have to make it in the script. We're going to randomize the seed. If you can keep track of the seed and regenerate the same level, we're not going to keep track of it for now. So the two main parameters that we're going to look at are octaves and period. Now, there are a couple other parameters that go along with noise, but we don't really need those today. This persistence isn't actually doing anything, so it actually can be deleted. The octaves is basically, so there's an algorithm that goes through and decides what the value of each pixel is going to be. And the octaves basically tells you how many times you're going to go through and pick values. Now, I'm only going to go through once because, like I said, we have a very large tile that we're using, and we don't really need to have it very refined for this particular one. Um, usually, you would have three or four octaves, but we only need one here. Now, period is basically zoom is the way I think about it. Uh, the higher the number is, the farther you zoom into the fog. Uh, and obviously, if you have more octaves and more refinement to this, the the period might be bigger, uh, just so you can kind of zoom in. But like I said, 1 in 10, this is very zoomed out. This is a very simple noise, uh, but it does the job. So I'm going to show you how this works in 2D first, opposed to all 3D. So when we create a chunk, last time we just picked a value between 0 and 1, and it was either the ground or it was the grass. Now we're going to split that into a few more parameters and pick between all four of them. So these are just numbers. There's really no rhyme or reason to them. I just kind of fiddled around with them until I kind of got something that I liked what it looked like. And so if the number that you get from the noise is less than... Uh, 0 0.04, it's going to be water. And if it's between 0 0.04 and 3, it's going to be grass and so on. If it doesn't fit into any of these, it'll just be a snow cap. And when you, um, I think last time when I had set cell, I had this equal A. 
this is kind of a common way to code in shaders and also just if you're going to be picking one, uh, it's pretty clear to just have that variable be final, the one that you're actually going to put in the function. And all the other variables, a, b, whatever you have, are going to be used for the math to figure out the final one. So when we play this, we end up with just this flat uh, surface, but it picks different values for us. And I that looks pretty good already, but as you saw before, I'd like to add some 3D to it. Now, I'd also like to point out that I am actually only going to use Noise 2D for this. Uh, basically, if you wanted to make a Minecraft type of feel, you'd have to use a 3D node to have all three dimensions. But really, I'm only going to be using a flat surface, and then depending on what type of tile I'm picking, I'm building it up from there, which I will show you in the next one. Uh, that's just one something that is kind of awkward, but I don't need the third dimension, so I don't want to bother looking it up. In this second create chunk, this one's slightly different with just a very minor change. I added a variable called y, so this is going to be how high we build up, and it's going to start out at 1. If it is water, I don't want to change it because I just want to be at the same spot. If it's grass, I'm going to add 1 to y. It will be 2. Dirt will be 3. And the snow cap will be 4. Now, the reason why I do this is, remember, if you do a for loop like this for num in y, it, let's say you have 3. A y is going to be 3. It will loop through 0, 1, 2, but it will not include 3. Uh, like I said, that is the standard of how this for loop works unless you tell it to do it differently. And so we will, instead of always having the y be 0, we will put it as y. So then it will build like like Legos on top. We have to change these chunk too. And what you end up with is this. We have little mountains. And now obviously there's a lot of variables that can be changed here. Um, I would like to add a lot more structures and uh, maybe even like caverns to go into or under. And we'll get to those eventually. But I think for now this is going to be good enough and we'll be moving on to items and enemies. Uh, and maybe some type of turret that will shoot at you. And we want to be able to shoot back. So... I hope you enjoyed this and we'll keep going.